With over 16 years of experience in the printing industry, Alex Fickner is a passionate and experienced leader who drives growth and innovation at Advertisers Printing, a fourth generation family owned business that provides sustainable and high quality printing solutions. He's on a mission to help businesses build their brand communications and strategy through innovative and effective print solutions that align with their goals and vision. Let's see what makes Al so buzzworthy. Welcome to the show, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm very good, Buzz. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Where are you calling in from today? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. I just moved uh, like six months ago from Springfield, Illinois. Oh, and St. Good. Louis was our favorite city to go in uh, in the Midwest. Um, I that love was driving that. distance. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the media and the news can uh, paint St. Louis in a uh, not the best light, but anyone who's visited knows how great of a place it is. Uh, wonderful food, lots of good things to do. St. Louis is a very cool, cool city. Oh, I love it. Yes. Um, yes. Really good food. It's, it was worth the hour and a half drive each way. Uh, sometimes we had to fly out of there too. Um, but anywho, I digress. We are now in uh, Providence Forge, Virginia, right outside of Richmond. Oh, Richmond good. reminds me of St. Louis, though Richmond has been around longer, but it, it reminds me of St. Louis. Uh, lots of good culture, diverse culture, uh, great food, lots to do. That's how I've been. We're only 30 minutes from downtown Richmond now, so a lot easier awesome. to get in to, to have yeah, some fun there. Absolutely. So diving into uh, your company, you said it, uh, I, I mentioned in your bio, a fourth generation uh, company um, in the printing industry. So that is so are we talking 80 100 years we are years? uh uh so uh buzz we've been going technically since 1922 my great grandfather claude started the business with two other partners and in february of 2023 he bought those partners out and it's been in my family since february of 1923 so uh we're going on 102 years next year now that is amazing. When I started my business 19 years ago, I always uh, loved that back in the day when they had the foil stickers, when people would be like 10 years old and they'd put them on everything, especially yes, a mail, you know, I put yeah. it on the back and to seal the envelope and whatnot when we used hard mail. And um, I was like, I wonder what it'd be like to be like a 10 year anniversary. Right. And when I made it to 10 years, I was so into it that it was like, yeah, I guess it's our 10 year anniversary. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, no, no. I'm coming up on my 20 year anniversary next year. And I'm like, wow, I've been in business for 20 years. This is amazing. So what do you think? Uh, first, let's, let's, let's let the li listeners uh, understand what your business does. Yes, sir. So um, Advertisers Printing, uh, founded in 1923, and we do business to business communications for a variety of different verticals, uh, most of a, a lot of which is uh, direct mail and omni channel direct mail campaigns. On top of that, print marketing materials, promotional items or swag. And for those who don't know what swag stands for in the printing industry, it's stuff we all get. And on top of that, we are doing a lot of signage and uh, wide format printing as well. I did not know swag was an acronym. I have been in the business for for a long time, and I've never. I swag is is just a terminology. I thought it was that is so funny. Stuff we all get. Yeah, I don't if you I, take anything from this podcast. You got that fact. There you go. Awesome. I call them tchotchkes, which is yeah, a Yiddish, a, Yiddish word for, for things that collect dust. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. <laughs> That's a good one for me. I've learned that. That thank you for that. I'll be using that. For sure. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, all right. So you're the fourth generation. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, or is there one younger than you in the business? So I have three young daughters: uh, uh, Heidi, Margo, and Farah. Uh, eight, six, and two. And, uh, you know, if uh, the, the plan is to keep going and I'd love for the girls to come into the business, but if they want to pursue their dreams, I'd rather them do that first. And they know they have this to fall back on. So there is a fifth generation. We will be a woman owned business. Ah, look at that. That's so yeah. awesome. 
So when, so what it made, I mean, you, I'm sure your father gave you the same options you're giving your uh, daughters. What drew you into uh, being part of the family business? I mean, so many, was it immediate? Like you right out of high school, you were like, yes, this is what I want to do. Or what was that journey look like? So, you know, my dad always had it out there for us as an option, but put no pressure on me or my siblings at all, but just kind of said, you know, hey, you know, if you're interested, this is something we can talk about. He came down to Mizzou when I was a sophomore and said, well, what are you thinking about doing? And we did this professional business assessment, answered all these questions. And uh, it was funny, the uh, first suggested uh, good fitting business for my personality was a cruise ship captain. The second was a locksmith. And the third, I can't even remember what it was. But after reviewing those results and at that point, knowing that the company had had, a, had been in our family for 80 something years, mm -hmm. you know, I thought this is really cool. And, uh, you know, the fact that uh, so few businesses today last that long, um, mm. I thought, you know, why not? Why not take a swing at it? And uh, came in here about two weeks after I got out of school and never looked back. And I've uh, seen the good and the bad and the ugly of the industry. And uh, I can't get enough oh, of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, there was a time where I owned a creative agency and we had a 13,000 square foot facility. And a chunk of that was a full fledged print shop. We did small yes, format, uh, large format. And we even did CD and DVD duplication back when that was yep. a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. And, and people always ask me, like, why do you have a print shop in for a creative agency? I was like, well, one, I have the room. And two, back then, um, I mean, this is all the way up through 2018 uh, when, when when I had it. It was it was just part of the process. Like it was such a big part of marketing, even with digital coming through and, and coming of age. It was like, OK, yes, your digital is there. It will get you there but you're not going to be a fully digital marketing campaign when you're out networking, when you're sending proposals, when you're communicating with people, all of that is still there. And uh, omni-channel uh, marketing and direct marketing, everybody talks about how dead direct marketing is. And for sure. me, I just got, it was easier for us to have a print shop in house and then drop it off at the bulk mailer than it was like have to run around town and have it there. So it was like, well, then we have it. So there it was. And it allowed us to be a lot more uh, agile for our clients. So was there a lot of, since you do have some folks that are from the great greatest generation, great grandfather still around? Oh, uh, no, he, he passed okay. a long time ago. Okay, so grandfather's still in the business? No, sir. Grandfather okay. passed in 2003. Oh yeah. I lost my mine. father and uncle. Uh, my uncle retired in 2022 and my father mm -hmm. is still involved with the business, but he's going to be taking a big step backward come January, 2025. So the, the, the question I have is, and, and I'm sorry, you lost those guys. I'm, I lost my grandfather in, I guess, 20, 2012, 2013. So about 10 years ago as well. Um, the, um, as, as the young kid coming up, right. And, and, were you, did you have to deal with um, the generational gaps in technology or was your father and the folks that were around at the time that you were coming in, like they were technic technologically forward of thinking? So I was blessed in the fact that my father and his team were very much forward thinking. Uh, we were one of the first print shops to, uh, to, uh, to take on digital prepress and work with Max and uh, get towards burning plates in a more efficient way, color corrections in a more efficient way. We were also a beta site for G7 color testing. And mm. one of our prepress people is actually a certified G7 instructor. So there have been cultural challenges, it's, you know, with kind of how businesses were run and culture and everything. Not to say sure. that we had a bad culture, but things just were different. They're, they're different, um, yeah. So still dealing with that today, but uh, my father's always been a very much of a forward thinker and uh, has always been open to any and all ideas that could help our customers uh, grow and uh, be happier with uh, the end result of the service we're providing. I love that. It's so many times I, I deal with uh, companies that, you know, family owned companies that, I mean, you, you always talk, I, I always end up talking usually to the younger generation uh, that has brought me in to try to help 
the, the older generation understand what's going on in the world around them because they just haven't caught up, uh, kept up. So it's so beautiful to hear that. And it's probably a testament to why your company has been around for over a century as well. Um, so congratulations on that. Um, you're well blessed for having that in, in your life. So when we talk about, um, I, I, I want to talk to you or I want you to talk about direct mail. And because a lot of people talk about, and we talked about this before the show, um, you know, as far as where does direct mail, a lot of people would say that it's dead, right? They're like, oh, direct mail, about a lumpy mail. I mean, all the things they're yeah. done, they're dead. I was like, no, they're not. I mean, they're actually innovating. I think direct mail is innovating better than some of the digital outlets out there. Like social media has been the social media that we know for almost 20 years now. Right. Sure. But direct mail, I feel like is innovating and evolving faster and more creatively than even social media. Can you talk to, to uh, the audience about like just what in the last five years has uh, evolved compared to what most people think direct mail is? So um, I don't want to go off on any sort of tangents here, but um, please do. ADD, I love tangents. No, what are you I, talking about? <laughs> my ADD is terrible. So I might, you know, go down another path, bring me back to earth if, uh, if that's the case. So, you know, the way um, I see it now is yes, you are correct that direct mail on, you know, you're correct on a couple of counts. The assumption is direct mail is dead and print is dead, which is so far from the truth. It's not even funny. Um, but the fact of the matter is we are in a digital world now and the misunderstanding um, from certain marketers uh, is, you know, it's all digital or nothing and not really considering a mix of print with digital. And that's where the biggest opportunity is for marketers that you can do so much more with your direct mail today than you could 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And it is mm -hmm. only getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, so when we talk about direct mail, we can connect a direct mail piece to seven to 13 additional digital mediums, provide a dashboard that is not only going to show how many pieces have de been delivered, when they delivered, how many clicks they're getting, and ultimately generating a brand new list of leads of those who were interacting with the digital ads that you can go then take that data, create a model around it and market more efficiently to people who are actually interested because mm. the fact of the matter here is buzz is, you know, it's probably blasphemy for me to say this, but as a printer anyway, um, there's print and postage is extremely expensive. Right. And the name of the game today is data. And mm -hmm. if your organization relies on direct mail as one of your outreach mediums, you are really, really missing the boat if you're not tying it to other digital mediums and making that as encompassing as humanly possible to get the best rate of return on your print and postage spend. Because mm. any printer can say, yeah, we, uh, we can print and mail for you. And then what data can they provide after that? And right. most of them can't do anything, but with QR codes, with social media, Google ads, USPS informed delivery, call tracking, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube, there's so many different things you can tie to it now. And the full circle moment I want everyone to realize here is when you get a direct mail piece or a unique print piece, what's the first thing you do? You go straight to the right. website. So. Right. You Google them, the QR code, yeah. Yep. <laughs> whatever you, most people are going to go to the website, especially the younger generation. Sure. Well, at that point, the print is now helping the digital marketing efforts that you're putting behind there. So mm -hmm. it is a driver to increase website traffic, uh, conversions, and more or less general interest in to whatever the offering is on that uh, piece of uh, print uh, on that printed collateral or that direct mail piece. So in mm -hmm. a way, they don't have to be either or. It can definitely be a complimentary offering and your response rates are going to get better when you do mm -hmm. type print into your marketing efforts. I, I don't think you can efficiently have one of those now. I mean, with what you were saying, like the cost of print. So if you're, you're going to spray and pray on yes. bulk mail, you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars 
um, on most of those are going in the trash, right? We're, we're talking a, a science of numbers here um, when we talk about direct mail and digital, right? We're talking percentiles, not a single digit, low percentiles, right? One, two percent a lot of times is the, the response rate, even in the digital realm. Right. If we can get a three percent, three and a half percent click through rate on a digital ad, we're excited. We're ecstatic. And in some cases, there's like the, I've got campaigns that that the client is excited when we get like a half a percent click through rates on some of the bulk ads that are out there display only. So um, and it's not much different with with direct mail. You know, when I'm running them, I'm usually sitting there going, hey, if you get two two percent of the two, two out of every hundred that you send out actually contact you, um, in, in a, in a bulk mail, just like, here's a list and send it out just cold. There's nothing to it. Right. But I mean, when you're tying it with your digital and with the, um, uh, the variable printing options that you have now to where you can personalize the print per person, right? So now it's, hi, Al, I, I noticed that you were interested in my book, blah, 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 blah. Here, here's a coupon code. If you go to this website, boom, done. What? You, you just call me by my name on a postcard? What? This right here is not getting thrown away immediately. It is getting read. No, right? sir. And the life of that printed piece is 17 days. The average life of your direct mail piece is 17 days. The life of a digital ad is seconds. So, yeah. and I'm not saying don't go digital. We're in a digital world, but embrace everything. And if there was a silver bullet for marketing, none of us would have jobs, right? right. You know, right. That the one thing that works, <laughs> everyone would dump their money into. Right. So it's testing the mix and figuring out what works for you. But that's a great example, Buzz, that you provided there is, you know, it can be your first name. It could be something you left in a cart online. Hey, you now can you now can complete this purchase at 20% off by using this code. Right. And so many marketers are missing the boat on not taking advantage of those things. And if they really, really do deep work on their customer and know what the average uh, life, lifetime is of them and know what the average spend is, and then really, really get down with targeting and personalization, Mm. and approaching a marketing campaign mm -hmm. with an omni-channel approach, the results are going to be so much better and you're going to be able to figure out where to best put those marketing dollars much faster than the spray and pray and being siloed in so many other areas of marketing. Oh, I love that. And, you know, it's funny because I think it's a... It's a product of the early teen, 2000 teens, late, late 2000 aughts, and then the teens where social media became so easy and fast for marketers. And we had a lot of wannabe marketers who did that just jumped in for social media. And it was basically the wild, wild west gold rush of social media ads. Right. And you could, if, if you could if put the money in the, the algorithm and tell them who you wanted, as long as you had a, a offer and a message that connected with the general public, uh, the general uh, populace of that targeted market, you were in and it was immediate. It was like that, like within two weeks, you're making money, right? But yes, with iOS 14 and, and, and basically getting rid of all third party data, it changed the game immediately. And I think that a lot of those people who came in in, in those late aughts, early teens, that just all they knew was social media ads. They didn't really understand the fundamentals of marketing. And I think that that's where um, owning the data, like you said earlier, is so important. And being able to correlate that data with action is where you're talking about being a sniper with your mail outs. One so yes, it costs percent. us six times as much to, to mail one out. But if we're 10 times more focused or, or accurate of who we're sending it to, we're making money. Oh, you're, it's, it's, it's the biggest game changer uh, that, that is out there. And if you really do the deep work on figuring out what your, who your customer is, what they look like, those bulk direct mailing lists that are a hundred thousand a month or a quarter, whatever it is, you could get down to 10, personalize mm. it. And really, really, like you said, now you're marketing with a sniper rifle and your return on investment is going to drastically, drastically increase. So I understand the disdain for print and direct mail, but it's to people that just don't know what's possible out there. And, uh, you know, part of the part of the challenge is once you kind of figure it out and figure out how much better you can effectively market, um, you know, things are looking a lot brighter and you have a lot more money to throw around uh, to uh, to achieving your goals.